There are many things that I cherish in this cruel, cruel world we live in, people. And at the very top of that list is Halloween and all the cartoon specials that come with it. Now, as a kid, it's your job to just sit back and enjoy the Halloween cheer. But when you grow up, it starts being your job to help spread it for the next generation. And today, that's exactly what we're here to do. I've got my girl Lady Vanta with me, and we're going to break down our top 10 favorite Halloween cartoon specials. Let's get it started. Rose wants the doggy doo doo suit at boy. And I get the has been rock star. Oh, I'm going to give him such a pinch. Dude, count me in. And if there was ever a time to have one of your horror induced delusions, now is the time. Number 10 Camp Laszlo, Hollow Beanies. In Season 2, Episode 1 of Camp Laszlo, we see how Camp Jellybean celebrates All Hallows' Eve their way. See, in this episode, all the other kids went home for fall break to celebrate Halloween, leaving Lumpus to enjoy some peace and quiet, because he apparently lives at the camp? To each our own, man, it's your life. I am no dead man to tell him how to live it. Sucks, though, because these three dumbasses voluntarily choose to stay behind, thinking Halloween would be better spent in the same place they spend every other fucking day of their lives. They then proceed to innocently terrorize the old moose, resulting in the three of them vomiting candy all over him. And if stuffing yourself sick with candy isn't what Halloween is all about, then damn it, I do not know what is. Number 9, The Simpsons, Treehouse of Horrors. Fucking pick one. We've got each one containing three mini-episodes, and there's 30 in all, so let's just pick one to go on. Treehouse of Horror 7, we find out that Bart was born as a conjoined twin. His deformed twin, Hugo, had been living in the attic this entire time, his family believing he was evil. But spoiler alert for this decades-old episode, turns out there was a mix-up. Bart was the evil one, and Hugo was sweet and kind. And if this episode was canon, Bart would have been the one stuck up in the attic from that episode onward. And as much as I love Bart, come on people, you look at this sweetheart and tell me you didn't want to see more of him. We only picked this episode to speak on, but we consider every Treehouse of Horror episode to be worthy of number nine. Number 8, Jimmy Neutron, Nightmare in Retroville. Season 2, Episode 6 of Big Head Jones has Jimmy turning him, the gang, and incidentally his dad into Halloween-themed monsters like vampires and werewolves and Frankenstein. Where Sheen and Count Carl wreak havoc on the city with Cindy and Libby while Frank and Hugh just, just fucks around, who knows. In the end, Jimmy had to turn himself into every Japanese schoolgirl's fever dream to get these idiots back in line. And you know, people, this episode will always have a place in our hearts. That's why it clocks in at number eight. Mm. Oh, don't mumble. You sound like you have a mouthful of marbles. Mm. Oh. My! Hugh, what are you doing? This isn't our rumble lesson night. Mm. <sighs> I wish I was married. <laughs> so you think you're funny. Number 7, Bravo Doobie Doo. Back in the old days, when a crossover was just God's gift to mankind and not something we got every other Thursday, Johnny Bravo's car breaks down just as the one and only mystery gang rolls up on him, as chance may have it. And for this episode, Mr. Bravo joins them in solving the latest mystery, resulting in one of the longest running gags, but in this particular instance, it just stayed with all of us a little bit longer. <laughs> My glasses. I can't be seen without my glasses. The thing about Scooby-Doo, especially in the earlier series like this one, is that basically every entire episode is a Halloween special. The entire franchise is like one big spooky dookie from Spirit Halloween. But I hope a lot of you will agree with me when I say that this is one of the best episodes to pick from, and that's why it comes in at number seven. Number six, Gravity Falls Summerween. See, this is the problem with wanting to do holiday-based episodes and cartoons fully based in summer. You gotta make up dumb shit like Summerween. Don't get me wrong, we're all in agreement here. Gravity Falls is a masterpiece. But the entire concept of replicating our glorious fall holiday in summer is just disrespectful. Season 1, episode 12 has the town of Gravity Falls celebrating when this creepy fuck starts acting goofy. 
Just about any top 10 I'm in will probably contain Gravity Falls taught in the top 5, but not this go round. I just can't forgive the Summerween stuff. So the Pines family is gonna have to sit tight at number 6. Have the police come and eject the Pines family from the store. Not today! My eyes! <laughs> you paid for the stuff, right? Of course! I hate Summerween. Let's move! Number five, Fairly Odd Parents, Scary Godparents. I can't be the only one that has this episode weirdly engraved in my mind. Like, maybe not the whole entire plot, but the Pumpkinators are here to stay. Season 2, episode 13 in this series' first holiday theme special and the final episode of the season. Starts off about the same as your usual Fairly Odd Parents episode. Everybody's living their life perfectly fucking fine when Bucky the Wonder Brat decides to fuck everyone's day up. Fed up with the popular kids out here living their best life, Timmy wishes for everyone's Halloween costume to come to life. And, you guessed it, it all falls apart. The Pumpkinator's real shit prepare to blow this planet sky high before Fucktooth realizes he should have just left well enough alone. Anyway, this episode makes top five. Candy! And if my calculations are correct, our project will have an apple supply of candy for weeks! It's, it's the, the greatest, greatest Halloween ever! ever. Number four, Danny Phantom Fright Night. Season one, episode 13. I'm sensing a theme here. Now, this is some quality holiday special right here. Classic character tropes, interesting yet reliable plot formula, all while introducing an original character. Danny gets himself in trouble, and Lancer being Lancer decides the best punishment for him and Dash is to compete for the best Halloween display to avoid detention. Danny, being the filthy cheater that he is, goes to the ghost zone to cheat filthily. There, the idiot accidentally frees Fright Night, one of the coolest villains of the series. And for some odd reason, this episode was forgotten by many, but not here. No one dies here. This episode makes fourth place. Phew. Number three, Ed Ed Nettie's Boo Ha Ha. Personal fact about me, people. When I was a kid, a lot of people would often ask me what my favorite cartoon was, and I never really had an answer. I liked all of them. So one day, Ed and Eddie happened to be on this special, in fact, and I told myself, you know what, from now on, whenever somebody asks me what my favorite cartoon is, I'm just going to say this one. 10, 15 years later, and I could not have made a better decision. Ed and Eddie will always be a cult classic, and their Halloween special will be played every October, whether my future kids want it or not. Okay, so the premise is that instead of enjoying a normal fucking Halloween like normal fucking kids, the Eds decide to spend Halloween night searching for Spookyville, a place on a map that he got from his older brother and oh fuck, I spent so much time talking about my childhood, I'm almost out of time. Uh, Eddie only wants to find Spookyville. Uh, Double D has never, will never do anything wrong. Uh, the Ed beats the shit out of the innocent. Johnny had no earthly right being that terrifying. The cankers. Silver medal. SpongeBob scaredy pants. It wouldn't even surprise me if you don't remember this one. I legit think they aired this episode one time, then never again. Season 1. Go ahead. Guess the episode. Yes, episode 13 has Bikini Bottom celebrating Halloween, which is weird because why do they know about this one but not Christmas? SpongeBob being the pissant that he is keeps getting scared by everyone, but in retaliation he decides to don a costume so spooky it'll make the Dutchman himself run scared. Fucking ghost. But before donning the spooky sheets, he has Patrick shave his head so people won't know it's him. And let's just say he shaves off a little more than off the top. Hey, what do you know? I scared him. <laughs> you know what? I take it back. It makes perfect sense why they didn't air this episode anymore. Jesus. If by some chance you had no memory of this episode and I awaken it in you, then expect my apology in the mail come New Year's. This nightmare fuel comes in with a silver medal. It worked, Patrick. I scared everybody. Yeah, I guess it was your pink hat. Pink hat? Oh, that's not a hat. That's my brain. Oh. Ah! All right, folks, it's that time once again. Time for the honorable mentions lightning round. For anyone that doesn't know, this is everyone who I thought didn't make the list for one reason or another, usually because I forgot about them, but they're still getting a shout out to help me with those tags and hold the algorithm. Don't worry about that. Let's go. Regular show, Terror Tales of the Park. Just the wizard one. Oddly chilling for such a wacky show. Craig of the Creek for his parents' costume alone. Hey, Arnold. 
Any particular reason they made these little fuckers as disturbing as they did? Beavis and Butthead. Bad show, good special, I said what I said. The Rugrats. Genuinely forgot about it until just now. Kids Next Door. Wallaby Beatles Supremacy. Charlie Brown. Linus had to have been part of some cult or something, right? I, that can't just be me. Billy and Mandy. If it were up to me and only me this go round, this probably would have been first place. This was just a classic. The Addams Family. Any appearance they have made on any media at any given point in time. Alvin and the Chipmunks. Specifically the Werewolf episode. Specifically the Were Rabbit episode. Over the Garden Walls. The entire series is one long chill fest. You damn right it's on this list. Amazing World of Gumball. For this costume alone. Amphibia. Has the same vibes as the regular show specials. Star vs. the Forces of Evil. Marco's entire family is just lit. Scary Godmother's Halloween Spectacular. If classic and timeless were put into a DVD form, it would look like this. Alright people, a new segment in one of my top 10 videos. Me and Vanta ended up disagreeing on who should get number 1, and as we finally came to a conclusion, we decided to give credit with who they tied with. Underfist Halloween Bash was the attempted start of a Billy and Mandy spinoff series, but because Maxwell Adams' contract with Cartoon Network had ended, it ended up being the finale of the series. Not that I'm complaining, this movie is a godsend. Mindy, being a witch, summons a portal from the candy world ready to invade and take over the world with a marshmallow bunny. Erwin, having awakened his mummy vampire powers like a fucking Dragon Ball Z character, has to team up with Hostel Gatto, former General Scar, Jeff the Daddy King Spider, and Fred Fred, the worthless elephant demon who has apparently lost weight since the last time we saw him. Fight, fight, fight! Yeah! I rock! Everything about this movie is amazing. Quality animation, anime level fight scenes, most of the jokes land, the plot is strangely compelling for such a wacky show, and I promise you it will be watched in this house every Halloween. So, Underfist Halloween Bash is your first runner-up. Someone would have to be pretty brave or pretty stupid to try and stop me. Or both! We looked, folks. We looked and looked and checked the archives for any tune more deserving of Best Halloween Special. And while we came close with a few, we here at Dead Man Toons Network we? believe this all-time classic is the most deserving of number one. Nice work, Bone Daddy. I'm 100% positive everyone knows everything about this film by now, but why not? Here we go. Nightmare Before Christmas is a 1993 stop-motion claymation holiday special following Jack Skellington, the Pumpkin King, and his endeavor to relight the spark in his pants after celebrating Halloween and only Halloween year after year after year just doesn't tickle his fancy like it used to. On a walk one day, he discovers a door that leads to Whoville, I mean Christmastown. He then steals a car and a bag of people's belongings and tries to do Christmas the Halloween Town way. This movie is the definition of a cult classic and is timeless. It's a musical and every single song is a pure masterpiece. My personal favorite is Kidnap the Sandy Claws. Because, I mean, come on, man. Who doesn't like Shock, Lock, and Barrel? Look at these little gremlins. And mine's What's This? There has been a debate over the years on whether or not this movie counts as Halloween or Christmas, but the honest answer? It's really just a great movie, and I'll be damned if I let anyone tell me when I can and can't watch this amazing film, and we hope you don't either. That's why we believe Nightmare Before Christmas deserves the gold medal. You don't look like yourself, Jack. Not at all. Isn't that wonderful? It couldn't be more wonderful. But you're the Pumpkin King. Not anymore. 